This program is brought to you by the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii, a nonprofit organization dedicated to sharing with the community the many benefits of a vegetarian diet. Free monthly meetings include vegetarian experts found locally and on the mainland, quick and easy cooking demonstrations, and helpful and delicious food samples. Members enjoy an informative quarterly newsletter, social activities, and discounts at many vegetarian-friendly restaurants and health food stores. For an application, call 944-8344. That's 944-8344. Or visit our website at www.vsh.org. vsh.org. Hi everyone. Today we're gathered at the Still and Moving Center at 1024 Queen Street in Honolulu, Hawaii for a session of the Tao of Cooking by vegan chef Orianne Lee. The Still and Moving Center is a unique place which offers a diverse schedule of classes and activities ranging from Indian dance and yoga to hula and crafts, films, and even a weekly vegetarian potluck. The center's activities aim to expand awareness of self in body, mind, heart, and spirit through moving meditation with the stated goal that everyone who engages in its offerings should walk out feeling better in every sense than they did when they entered. Oriane, who teaches both vegan cooking and mindful meditation at the center, is a trained vegan chef who has traveled extensively to learn about the cuisines of the world firsthand. She received her formal culinary education at schools in Europe and in North America, including at a prestigious French culinary institute in France and at Le Cordon Vert Cookery School in England. Oriane and her husband are currently host parents of Xavier Tezunas de Montsel, who will be assisting her today. The Tao of Cooking is a series of lessons featuring different ethnic cuisines utilizing a blend of Taoist and Zen wisdom as applied to the process of preparing food in a mindful manner. Meditation helps to get students ready for a transformative hands-on adventure in utilizing ingredients and utensils together to create dishes that are both delicious and healthy. Today's class will feature a French vegetarian cuisine, traditional recipes with a modern twist. It's my pleasure now to present to you, Chef Oriane Lee. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode, no, another class of Dao cooking, and this one is French vegetarian. So I'm so happy to see so many of you here today, and thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. We're going to start by having a little discussion and also maybe meditating a little bit for five minutes, and that's our tradition. We would like to settle our minds and uh, calm our hearts uh, before we venture into cooking. Because cooking to me is a, a very special activity. Uh, do that in a second. But I would like a volunteer to read the quote of today from Lao Tzu. Would I have a volunteer? I'd be happy to volunteer. Great. Great. Good. Without going out the door, know the world. Without peering out the window, see that heavenly Tao. The further one goes, the less one knows. Therefore the sage knows without going, names without seeing, achieves without striving. Lao Tzu. Thank you. The reason why I chose this quote for today, um, partly because I want to talk about non-doing today, but another reason is, um, you know, we're going to be featuring a dish called ratatouille, or ratatouille, to make it more correct. <laughs> this is a very famous French dish, and there is a famous movie, too. Have you guys seen this movie? It's a cartoon. It's just fantastic. Have any? Have you seen it, Lorraine? Yeah, a couple people have seen it. Okay. It's, it features a French rat. He accidentally came upon a cookbook from a master, so then instantly he learned how to cook. And then he was creating these uh, fantastic dishes for this restaurant that was facing closing and uh, saved the restaurant. So every time I was looking at this quote, I would think about the image of the rat. You know, without peering out the window, he sees the heavenly Tao. <laughs> because he, everything to him was so effortless. It was so easy for him. He didn't try too hard. His father and his brother, you know, in the movie, were trying to 
tell him how to do things in a certain way to stay with the tradition. Speak things, Dad. Stay away from the humans. It's dangerous. Now shut up and eat your garbage. But he just decided to go out and, and, and you know, welcome the world. So I wanted to go home and watch this movie, <laughs> and then you'll know what I'm talking about. And then uh, my favorite uh, line is, achieves without striving. So today's uh, theme is the art of non-doing. And non-doing does not mean not to do anything. It's about doing without effort. And also, nothing is being forced while we're doing it, so things come naturally. Nothing is left undone, even though we're not trying to you know, push for it. Um, you know, in today's world, doing is much more accepted and uh, more popular, but non-doing takes a lot more effort because we're used to doing, always on the run, right? Progress is a big deal in our society. So we like to shift our thinking and focus on non-doing, this ancient concept of non-doing. When we are engaging ourselves inward, um, creating stillness inside, that inside stillness will merge with our outside activities, and the two combined will create this flow of energy. If you don't cut your vegetable in the perfect manner, if it's not perfectly rounded, it's okay. <laughs> so that's, the, that's today's objective, is not to be a perfectionist and to just to follow the flow and enjoy one another's company and share this moment together. Another quote I would like to read is from Dr. John kabat -Zing. Non-doing simply means letting things be and allowing them to unfold in their own way. So with this sentence in mind, we would sit for five minutes, just close our eyes. If you've never meditated before, it's okay, because um, the focus is actually not to be perfect. We just want to close our eyes and center our breath and uh, just be quiet and see if you can empty your mind of a lot of thinking. So let's see if we can do that. I'm going to use this gong to be our timer. I'm going to tap it once to get in to meditation or to sitting and then tap another time to come out of meditation. The whole process will take about five minutes. So, and, um, still point of the turning world, there the dance is. Except for the point, the still point, there would be no dance, and there is only the dance. Can you explain what that means? To me, it is very much about this idea of stillness. Um, it's represented in the logo of the Still and Moving Center, and it uh, to me, represents that we all have within us the, a still point. We have a, a center of calm, of great peace, and no matter what's going on in our external world and our external lives, if we touch deeply within, uh, we can still experience that, that stillness. 
other people's point of view, it's, it's uh, a little more sectarian. I want to point out somebody else we have with us today. Can you see St. Francis down here? Yeah. It seemed appropriate, since we were doing vegetarian cooking, to have St. Francis with us today. St. Francis is the patron saint of all the animals, all the creatures, and he felt so close to them, he felt as if he was their brother. So I know that protecting animals is something that's very dear to Oriane's heart, and uh, is the basis, I believe, of her vegetarianism. And so it seemed appropriate to have St. Francis with us yes, as well. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Still a Moving Center is a place for moving meditation, as we heard at the very beginning. And it seems possible that no matter what we're doing in our lives, we can do it from a meditative standpoint. Cooking is a wonderful way to engage in that, that mindful practice, keeping the stillness within so that each one of our movements is coming from a deliberate and still place. Not overly the planned. Of, the place of non-doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that it's possible to have that behind our, our cooking practices. It lends itself very easily to that. Yeah. To us, to me, cooking is not just a task. It's a, a meditation. It's an adventure. And we're talking about you know, going on this journey together very transforming. Okay, so French cuisines. In the Middle Ages, there were, a, uh, there were a lot of famines in France. Because of that, meats and fish were replaced by cereals, and a lot of vegetables were used, herbs were used, dry, dried uh, beans were used in France. And it was not until World War I when meat became more popular. So you have this a very long period of time in the French history that vegetarian food was readily available. There are two types of food, or you know, you categorize French cooking into two categories. One is the haute cuisine, which is the high-end cuisine evolving around great chefs of France. And then the other cuisine is called the cuisine régionale, regional cuisine. Food that has been passed down from mother to daughter representing a lot of French family life, uh, family cooking. So uh, Xavier is from southern France, from this uh, wonderful region called Roussillon. Okay, Roussillon. Anyway, so today he's going to help demonstrate a family recipe given to him by his mother. So, and uh, I know he's homesick, and so making that dish, I think it reminds him of, of home, you know, of f something familiar. And uh, so we make that dish a lot. We're going to make it a lot <laughs> in the house. One thing I want to mention is that the French are very smart shoppers. When they go to a market to shop, they are always, always looking for fresh ingredients. And a lot of times, uh, the vegetables have to be baby form, you know, very, very young. And then when they make it, the vegetables will be very tender and fresh. The French have a way to be very imaginative with cooking vegetables. At the same time, make, the make them in such a way that it's surprisingly simple. So you'll find out you know, in this recipe, ratatouille, how easy it is to make it. So we're gonna show two different styles. One is Xavier's family cooking, and I'm going to do a foodie version of ratatouille, and uh, together you'll see two ways. And you can make both of them at home. Very yummy. One more thing I want to mention, Today I've prepared a soup from a region, uh, Auvergne, uh, central France. This is a region that the soil isn't as fertile as southern France, you know, where ratatouille is very popular in Provence, for instance, because the soil is so fertile and the place is very famous for growing olives and uh, produce a lot of olive oil. But in uh, Auvergne, I, as I was um, told, that um, it's not quite as easy to grow vegetables. So lentils is a very big deal in this region because La Puy, La Puy. From this region, La Puy, um, there is a, a very beautiful blackish, greenish colored lentils. 
and uh, you can still you can get some in Hawaii actually, and that's a very special food. You can make it into a beautiful stew. French love soups for dinner, so lentil soup um, is what we're going to be serving for dinner today in our group. Any questions before we start uh, chopping? Okay, I think you guys are ready to. So we're gonna all wear a uh, apron, and uh, I hope everybody has well, or not. Or not. Okay. I hope everybody has a cutting uh, knife and also cutting board. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll have enough. We'll have enough. Great. So uh, let's um, get to it. I'm going to be making a fruity version of ratatouille, and uh, Xavier will be making family style ratatouille, taught by his mother. I, I just want to show you the options. Um, the one that we're going to be eating actually in a bit uh, was made um, last night, and I, it actually takes two days, but that one I used fresh tomatoes, and I had a chance to cook it for a long time. So right now, we are using canned tomatoes. And uh, you know, at home you can do either the canned version or the fresh tomatoes. <laughs> okay, onions. This uh, tomato puree, it's a little juicy, so we need to kind of squeeze it. So hopefully I'm not going to get it all over my shirt. Kind of break it up. Wow, it is coming out. Coming all directions. Is that puree or soup? This is actually, no, this is not puree, I'm sorry. This is whole tomatoes, but canned tomatoes. Okay. So this dish, even the foodie version, can be done very quickly if you're willing to go to uh, canned tomatoes. 
And I figure this is a sort of a alternative if you don't have the time to make it from fresh tomatoes. The three most important herbs in France, parsley, thyme, and bay leaf. So I'm going to put in quite a bit. I'm sorry? Did you have some herbs for the Provence? Yeah, that's the Provence is for his dish, Provence, okay. yeah. This is, this is uh, my version uses uh, fresh thyme. And I like to improvise since the dog cooking is all about improvisation. I'm going to get this wonderful, wonderful rosemary uh, grown in the rain's garden. Um, just gonna put in some. I'm sure it's okay. Okay, and I'm going to put in some tomato paste. We had this discussion before cooking today because we wanted to be mindful about health and we don't want to overuse oil, but then we also understand that <coughs> olive oil is popular all of France. It's probably healthier than most other oils. So I think Dr. Bill has given his okay for us to use, to use some olive oil today. I'm going to add more um, tomato paste. So far you've added the zucchini and the eggplant to the onion and the garlic, right? What? Uh, what? The egg, uh, eggplant and zucchini, you added that to the garlic and the onion. Oh, no, I can say that on the camera. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I just put uh, the eggplant and zucchini into the pan and the onion and garlic before. And I'm going to assemble it here. At this point, if you're making this at home, after you finish the sauce, you should turn on your oven and preheat it to 350 degrees for this recipe. So I'm just going to turn it off. So now I'm going to move on to this table and do the assembly for my dish. So now I've used a tomato sauce as the base of this baking dish, and now I'm ready to assemble my ratatouille. Uh, pattern. While uh, Xavier is cooking his, I'm just going to start. And this is really something you can take, have so much fun in, and it doesn't have to be one way. It can be many different ways. So, you know, somebody just now chopped this nice piece of uh, eggplant for me. So I'm going to lay down my first piece. And then I think purple goes well with red, I think. Yeah. So I'm going to put red next to it. Maybe uh, some zucchini. And now it's time for green colored veggie. And if you want to have lots of vegetables, you can kind of stack them up tighter. And that way you'll have lots. So today, you know. Can uh, you identify each vegetable? Yes, eggplant. This is tomato, Roma tomato. And this is yellow squash and this is zucchini. And if you want to, you can always add some uh, of this color. This is very beautiful, red bell pepper. And it also just adds more color to it. You know, you can just have fun and play with it. Yeah. So I'm just gonna alternate. So now I've got black, red, yellow, green, and I'm going to put another piece of black here. And also I want to show this option. You can use uh, Asian eggplant as well. You know, they're the same. It's just, you know, it might look differently because this is a much smaller eggplant. And uh, you know, look at the difference. So, but you can still do it. I mean, why not? Who's saying no, right? So I'm gonna put two here. <laughs> okay. So I think it's time to put in another piece of tomato, or tomato, and then uh, zucchini. So anybody wants to come and help me? Yeah, I'll let uh, have some fun here. 
We'll just need to finish up the whole tray. Uh, 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 so? That's a good goal so this one. Okay. I put, uh, I'm enjoying watching. The, we just want to make sure that we reveal uh, the colors. You know? This vegetable ones. Mm -hmm. Red bell pepper and green bell pepper. Red bell pepper, green bell pepper. And, yeah. pepper, green bell pepper, and uh, yes. in the pound. And then um, I'm going to put my. Yeah, come in. Yeah, everybody wants to come in. Uh, and then, Barbara's um, just super artistic. Yeah, please come. We, what we'll do, Barbara, is to make a circle and then we're going to fill in the middle. You know what I'm saying? We'll just, however way we're going to do it, we're going to fill up the whole thing. Yellow and then green. Zucchini. So maybe we'll just say zucchini. And then now after green, I'm going to put in a black. So yeah. So maybe, uh, Barbara, you, you want to do it in reverse and we'll meet somehow? Oh, you start doing it this way. Too just kind of looking. Okay, so actually, this one doesn't have to be there. Yeah, but uh, doesn't the fire has to be low. For now. Um, so now, black is green, and then yellow and red, and then we'll just meet somehow. Yeah. And, um, so, um, yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. That's right. So this is a really big one. This one, this one. This is the yellow squash. Yeah, oh, we'll make it tight. Yeah, oh, just great. nice and tight. Yeah, but then you want to kind of show it a little bit. Yeah, there you go. So that when the time we finish, it'll be a nice roll, very tight. Yeah, so this one needs to review itself. Yeah. Right. Okay, so after the purple, I'm going to turn red. <laughs> Sorry. The purple one is right here. You can use. Oh, okay, small purple is right. So what what did you just add? You, you can just say? use one, but mm -hmm. I used two. Can you tell me you just added olive oil? Uh yeah, just finished the bottle of olive oil. So yeah, that have to be really wet. Yellow. Yeah, this kind of yeah, just grab, yeah, grab, a lot yeah. of olive oil. Yeah. So yeah, if we don't uh, give them a lot of olive oil, that will be uh, really dry and really not tasty. You know, I'm just going to decorate this with more red. More, uh, yes. So we can have uh, some of these. I just asked in song. Yeah, and save me the, the nicer pieces. You know, these ones you can take. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> okay, after the red, we're going to do, we're almost done. We're some getting tomatoes. There. And then we need a We have more money up to the uh, Cretin Square. Yeah, I still don't look at we will do with uh, what I have. Start <laughs> okay. okay, green, and then I need another purple. Just too big. Green, and then uh, red. Good, yeah. That's okay. Now what are you doing? Otherwise, um, I put some uh, some uh, Provence yeah. herb de Provence in French. It's for the taste. And uh, okay. yeah, that's a really, really good taste. Yeah. And it's a really uh, it's really used uh, in France for a whole lot yeah. of uh, different different yeah. uh, recipes. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's that uh, good. It's, uh, it's really good with uh, olive oil. Fix it. How do you pronounce it again in French? In Francais? Uh, is there Provence herb or olive oil? The uh, herbs de Provence. Herbs de Provence. Herbs de Provence. Herbs. Try this dark. Yeah. Black. Just for excitement. Yeah. Okay. French? Ratatouille. Yeah, it's uh, ratatouille. After <laughs> I put some okay. paper. And then uh, yellow squash. Do you want salt? Where did it come have you seen the movie where the rats pulling the kids Sure, here? it's really famous. Oh, Zabi knows how to imitate that, would you? Ah, Paris, France. Home of the finest restaurants and the greatest chefs in the world. All my life I've wanted to be one of them. You may think that's a strange dream for a rat, but I always believe that with hard work and a little luck, it's only a matter of time before I'm discovered. Rah! Get some Do you know 
know what would happen if anyone knew we had a rat in our kitchen. Go! Take it away from here, garbage boy! Don't look at me like that! You're the one who was getting fancy with the spices! I need this job. I've lost so many. I don't know how to cook, and now I'm actually talking to a rat as if you... Did you not? You understand me? I can't cook, but you can, right? Look, don't be so modest. You're a rat for Pete's sake. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? We just need to work out a system so that I do what you want. <laughs> Stop that! Stop what? Stop that! Flicking me out! Ooh. I want to make things, Dad. Stay away from the humans. It's Ooh. dangerous. Ah. Now shut up and eat your garbage. Oh. Oh. <laughs> How did you do that? Just once in a life. Let's do this thing! Man knows a moment. You gotta taste this! You detect that? An oaky nuttiness? Oh, I'm detecting nuttiness. We hate to be rude, but we're friends. I have a secret. I have a rat. <laughs> you have a rush? She's toying with my mind, taunting me with that rat. As though I had Come on, it's getting the word. Together, we can be the greatest chef in Paris. Ratatouille? You're in Paris now, baby. My town. Hey. <laughs> Show us. Uh, give us a little invitation of that. Right, he is so good, I swear. <laughs> okay, all right, here, here's how we're going to do it. <laughs> okay, Zavi, I'm going to pull your hair. Yeah. <laughs> here. <laughs> That's right, you know? Hey. <laughs> you don't look like a rat. Hey, I'm the puppeteer. I'm the puppet master. <laughs> yeah, it's a really famous film in France. Yeah. What? Yeah, I think maybe yeah. I not a lot, not all people in France see it, but I would be uh, the biggest part of France see yeah, this film. Oh, it's pretty big over here too. Okay. Really? No, yeah. Oh, yeah. In France, it's an American film, though. It is. It was made yeah. by Disney. Pixar. But yeah, for us. I talk about French and I cook, so <laughs> it's really famous in France too. Yeah. Actually, uh, the web, people on the web are calling it the best cartoon yeah, ever made. Oh, well, we need a chef's we'll cap for you and a little wrap. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry first, uh, we didn't have that. Well, first, I wanted to do this in the, for these classes. Okay, yeah. give a share and hats and everything. Our first piece can be. And never rats. From the yellow squash. Say what you just made in French. Uh, for a little while? Uh, just for a little while. So give us some French, because the, the French club here yeah, is going to be minutes. interested in this, too. Yeah. Did we make? Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, oh, in French? Yeah. OK. So, ça, c'est la ratatouille. Plat typiquement français. Fait plus au fait. Ce type est vraiment familial. Très peu fait dans les restaurants. C'est donc pour un dîner typiquement français, on Souvent quand on... la ratatouille est plutôt mangée en, en hiver, donc on commence souvent par une soupe. On continue euh, de la, le plat, donc euh, entrée, la soupe. Après le plat, c'est donc la, rata... la ratatouille, accompagnée euh, d'une viande, de bœuf ou, ou de euh, ou un steak, quelque chose comme ça. Après, euh, on prend souvent euh, du fromage. Not... Pas beaucoup, pas tous les Français, bah, mais euh, une grande partie euh, prend du, euh, mange du fromage euh, avant le dessert et après on finit par euh, un dessert euh, qui peut être euh, tout à différent, un fruit, un yaourt, euh, ça dépend des, des saisons. Plus de, de fruits en été et en hiver ça, ça ira plutôt dans les yaourts et euh, parfois les desserts cuits et chauds. Donc euh, en été c'est plus euh, salade de, de fruits. Zavi. Fantastic. Zavi. Yeah. Very good. No problem. <laughs> that looks great. 
So uh, maybe you should mention what this herb is because yeah. people um, here don't really know about this herb. I don't it's, know uh, that now too. I don't Provence. Uh, yeah. And then it, maybe smell it. Let me smell it and you can smell it together. And say it in French. In France. Uh, in France, herb de Provence. It's uh, really using uh, herbs in uh, France. We, could, uh, we use for yeah, a lot of cooking, sometimes easy cooking. Because yeah, it's really uh, smelly, really good tasting. And uh, that well, that's really good with vegetables and uh, potatoes too. With some uh, kind of uh, potatoes cooking, it's really good. So yeah, that comes from uh, the southeast of the French. Uh, yeah, it's a really good uh, region of France for specific uh, food. It's not a spicy uh, herbs, but it's tasty and not too too strong, uh, too strong uh, smell. So yeah, it's really really good for cooking, and uh, really appreciated by the French. It's a mixture of different herbs. Yeah, it's a mixture of I don't know how many herbs, but uh, so this is the dish. I'm going to put some veggie shreds, parmesan. Mozzarella, Romano flavor. Just um, on top a little bit. And a little bit of salt. And this is ready to go into the oven. Will you hold up the egg for me, please? Okay, so we're actually, I'm, I'm ready. So we are going to, this will go into the oven. And then now I have something that I made from yesterday. And then we're going to serve soup and uh, lemonade. Xavier said that lemonade was invented in France, so yeah. we're serving pink lemonade uh -huh. today. This is how it's, I would serve it. I would lift it as much as I could without the tomatoes, you know, and then I'll build myself a little. I want to just make it even higher. I'm actually building a display of this dish. I'm putting about two tablespoons of this, the, the tomato sauce into my dressing. And then now I don't have a fancy plate, but I'm just gonna put this together and use this as the dressing. All right, so I want to make this even taller. Because it's uh, just really magnificent that way. So I'm going to put the dressing on the side. I don't have a really nice uh, wide uh, display table, but this will do. I mean display plate. This will do. And then I'm going to get my chive. What's a chive? That's a good question. What's a chive? So you know that's how I would display it. Voila. This is called the ratatouille fancy style. <laughs> well, I think it's pretty nutritious. Then we sprinkle some nutritional. yeast, nutritional yeast, and we're all set. Okay, so we're going to, everybody, take a little bit of this, some soup, and we're going to make lemonade. So I'm going to say, yeah, thank you and everything, and I'll say bon appetit, and then you bon appetit, and look at the camera, and then wave to your parents, okay? Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. You know. Okay, so thank you everybody for this experience together, you know, our cooking, our sharing, and uh, bon appetit everybody. Bye. So what can we say about Ratatouille? Well, for one, the folks at Disney Pixar grossed $623 million and had a good deal of fun with the play on words about a rat who hides under the hat of a young apprentice, guiding his hands by pulling his hair to make him the greatest chef in France, a country that prides itself on culinary achievement. The film won the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature in 2007, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 96, and Le Monde
called it one of the greatest gastronomic films in the history of cinema. As for Ratatouille Nicoise, it originated in 18th century Nice, a peasant food made of brightly pigmented summer vegetables. Those bright colors absorb various wavelengths of light to protect the plant itself from oxidative stress caused by photons coming in from the sun. When you eat the plant food unpeeled, those same phytonutrient pigments protect you from peroxidation reactions in your own cells and are your chief dietary defense against the ravages of time. So those 18th century French peasants knew by instinct what some of us still haven't learned today, that it pays to eat a variety of colorful plant foods. Eggplant contains anthocyanins and phenolics, antioxidants that reduce risk of some cancers. They improve urinary tract health, memory function, and produce healthy aging. Tomatoes and red peppers contain lycopene and anthocyanins for a healthy heart, memory function, lower risk of some cancers, and urinary tract health. Zucchini and other greens contain lutein and indoles, which lower the risk for some cancers and maintain healthy vision, strong bones, and teeth. Summer squash contains vitamin C, carotenoids, and bioflavonoids, which help for a healthy heart, vision health, healthy immune system, lower risk of some cancers. Garlic and onion contain allicin for healthy cholesterol levels and to reduce risk for some cancers. Oriane's ratatouille recipe contains all of those vegetables, eggplant, tomatoes, red peppers, zucchini, summer squash, garlic, and onion. Notice that these recipes contain no animal foods, grains, or other foods that are lacking in several nutrients and phytochemicals. Using Nutritionist 4 software, I analyzed the nutrient values of the basic ratatouille recipe and got this graph. The vertical red arrow is pegged on the calorie content and you can see that most of the other nutrient bars go way out to the right of the red arrow. So food like this fills the stomach and meets almost all nutrient requirements before calorie needs are met. Your body then takes the missing calories out of your fat stores, producing that nutritional El Dorado called weight loss. If you stay on this whole food vegan diet, the weight loss becomes permanent. Here's that same recipe with a teaspoon of vitamin B12 containing nutritional yeast. This could easily be mixed into the extracted sauce, thus making the recipe complete. Oriane also gave us a recipe for lentil soup, and here is the nutrient graph for that. It's a tasty and healthy food, but it's no match for the ratatouille because, as you can see, it's short on vitamin A, alpha-tocopherol, vitamin E, riboflavin, cobalamin B12, and calcium. A little nutritional yeast would improve the flavor and fix the B12, but lentils, grains, and other beans are nutritionally incomplete, unlike those pigmented mixed vegetables called ratatouille. The Food and Nutrition Board gives recommended dietary allowances, RDAs, for both calories and nutrients. But the nutrient RDAs are pegged to the calorie RDAs. So there's really no sense introducing food weight into the analysis except as a means of measurement. The foregoing ratatouille graph uh, show that you always meet nutrient RDAs before calorie RDAs, you could live on the B12 ratatouille forever or until boredom set in. The ratatouille recipe used olive oil, but there is good evidence that vegetable oils contribute to obesity 
and many other health problems. After all, they're 100% of calories from fat, and it's generally the wrong kind of fat, mostly linoleic, which leads to inflammatory reactions rather than alpha-linolenic acid, the first of the omega-3 fatty acids that is anti-inflammatory and also generates the other important omega-3s. However, olive oil with an LA ALA ratio of 12 is certainly healthier than safflower oil at 746, cottonseed oil at 181, or corn oil at 46. However, soybean and canola have even lower ratios and flax oil actually comes in at 0.23 according to USDA nutrient data. However, the wild olive was collected and eaten by humans as far back as 8,000 BC. 5,000 years ago, olive presses became common from North Africa to Persia and on into the Middle Ages. The physiologist Ansel Keys suggested that olive oil is the heart protective component of the Mediterranean diet, although later writers seem to think the higher consumption of fruits and vegetables was the real key. In any event, it would appear that if you're going to use any kind of oil, olive oil is the best of a bad lot. In the Tao of Cooking class, French cuisine with Chef Oriane Lee. We'd like to bring in here now and thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. It was a, it's been such a great time. And we'd like to bring in Xavier, mm -hmm. her very capable assistant. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Aloha. Aloha. Shape. We do, we do, we got vitamin C. 
Helps you heal a bad cut or scrape. We do, we do, we got vitamin C. We help you out so naturally, cause we're so full of vitamin C. It can even heal a nasty bruise. Think about that when you choose your food. Vitamin C. It does so much, it's good for me. Vitamin C. Eat your five a day and it's easy. Muscles and bones stay fit. We do, we do, we got vitamin C. Who helps your body use the iron it gets? We do, we do, we got vitamin C. We help you out so naturally, cause we're so full of vitamin C. It fights diseases by the way. Eat at least one serving every day. Vitamin C, it does so much, it's good for me. Vitamin C. Eat your five a day and it's easy. You can start your day with juice. Put a sea fruit in your lunch. At dinner time, you can choose a tasty, delicious veggie to crunch. All the sea vegetables take a bow. All the flower peppers, broccoli, and more. Let's hear from all the sea fruits now. Kiwi, strawberries, bananas galore. A special hand for the citrus group. Oranges, grapefruits, and tangerines. Let's give it up for the vitamin C troop. Oh, oh, vitamin C. It does so much, it's good for me. Vitamin C. Eat your five a day and it's easy. Vitamin C. It does so much and it's good for me. Vitamin C. Eat your five a day and it's easy. So healthy for me. This program is brought to you by the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii, a nonprofit organization dedicated to sharing with the community the many benefits of a vegetarian diet. Free monthly meetings include vegetarian experts found locally and on the mainland, quick and easy cooking demonstrations, and healthful and delicious food samples. Members enjoy an informative quarterly newsletter, social activities, and discounts at many vegetarian-friendly restaurants and health food stores. For an application, call 944-8344. That's 944-8344. Or visit our website at www.vsh.org. vsh.org. <laughs> 